Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well and I hope that you are getting, as always, an amazing reading done. I am here today to do the second iteration of Read and Reviewed. I've read three more books and I'm here to tell you all about them. Just a reminder, um, I am reading my books this year in sort of this fashion. Every time I am rotating between books that came out in 2019 and then anything from 2018 and before, because I am trying to do something about this back here. I am trying to lessen my TBR shelves. I have so many books to read and um, I'm trying to get through them. So today's video will have two books from before 2018 and then one book that comes out this year. And all of them were very, very good. So I'm super excited to tell you about them. So as I always say, get ready, get your pen, get your paper, get your good reads, however you take care of what you're going to read next, because I think most of these books will wind up on your TBR. The first book I'm going to tell you about is Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. Now, I had seen this book in a bunch of bookstores and on a bunch of tables, and I had almost bought it. But then it wound up on Barack Obama's best books he read in 2018 list. So that sort of peaked. He has pretty good literary taste. Um, and then as 2018 best of lists came out, it was on almost all of them. And I was like, Russell, it's there. It's cosmic. You have to pick it up. So I did, and it was well worth the wait. Now, the thing about it is that it's broken into basically three novellas. Um, the first novella is told from the perspective of a young girl, I think she's about 26, who ends up in a relationship with a much older writer who is extremely famous. Now, Lisa Halliday is... Um, it is known that Lisa Halliday had a relationship with Philip Roth. So I feel like this is, um, and probably logically, and probably everybody knows this, it has some autobiographical fictional aspects to it. Um, and the first section of this book is freaking amazing. It is really about this relationship between this young woman and this older writer. He is sort of sitting, um, you know, he's sitting waiting. Everyone expects that he is going to win the Nobel Prize. And she and he, and there's sort of this underlying tone of every year that that happens and someone else is awarded the prize. It's so brilliantly done. That's also about their relationship as he continues to grow older and deal with health things, sort of the dynamic of them. Um, and it's, it is just so freaking fantastic. Now, a lot of people thought Philip Roth would win the Nobel Prize before he passed, and um, he never did. Um, and I can only imagine how he felt when the next American to win the Nobel Prize was uh, Bob Dylan. That's just a fascinating idea to me in and of itself. Um, but I think that what Lisa Holiday does so well is she lets you know that there is some reality to it, but also creates an amazing amazing story. The second novella is from the point of view of a young man who is an Iraqi American who is trying to travel back to Iraq um, to visit his brother. And he gets held over in the Heathrow airport and investigated. Um, and it is about sort of all of that. Um, what that part does amazingly is it sort of bounces back and forth, how his family wound up in the United States, how his brother wound up back in Iraq, his actual current situation, the investigation, what is going on, what the questions are being asked, what's being investigated, what the expectations are. Um, there's like a tension to that section that is, it's just, it's just brilliant. It's so very, very good. Um, and those two novellas in and of themselves are five-star reads. They're, they're freaking fantastic. The last section of the book is actually an interview with the author from the first section. And it is really interesting. Um, it is very good. It was my least favorite part. Um, this is very much a five-star read for me, this whole entire book. But I found that part the most difficult to get through. And I just, I don't know, I was so in love with those first two sections. There was bound to be a letdown. Uh, but I really think that this book and the connection, it talks about so many different things about so across so many different ways. Identity, um, how does one identify oneself and how do others identify you? Does that make sense? And that is from the point of view of this older writer who is perceived in one way and how he 
sort of makes himself perceived to this young woman, also how she is perceived. We have this Iraqi American who is how he perceives himself, how his family perceives him. He has a PhD in economics, um, which is also that interesting idea of his parents thought he would be a doctor and he wasn't a doctor, which is just, it's just one of those things that is rehashed, but this one has an extra oomph to it. Um, and also how he's being perceived by this, the system. The system um, is also, and then there's this a sense of tragedy to that section too. And then the last section really deals with sort of this understanding of reflecting. Um, what you learn about the author in the third section really informs the first section. And it just, it's really, it is freakingly good. And that is Asymmetry, Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday. I don't know why I didn't read this earlier. It is really that good highly recommend. Please go pick it up. The next book I'm going to tell you about comes out in February of this year, and it's a tour novella. It's a short little thing, but it is definitely worth. I was flying home from San Diego for a work meeting, opened it. By the time I landed, I was done with The Haunting of um, Tram Car Number 15 by P. DeJelly Clark. This comes out, as I said, on February 12th in the United States. And you guys, it is so good. So this is the story of two investigators in Cairo in 1912. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but what they have, they have been um, brought into an investigation for a tram car that is believed to be haunted. Now, this is a sci-fi world. So there are, there's magic, there are jinn, there are um, different beings. There's a lot of stuff. What's really interesting is it mixes in real life human things like the suffrage movement, which is interwoven throughout this story, and also these magical elements. What happens is the investigators try to figure out why and who is in this, who is haunting this tram. And they go through steps and it is really a mystery. You don't know. And as things sort of come to being, um, things start to get solved by the in influx of different types of characters. There's a lot of... Um, Armenian um, folklore also in this, which was fascinating, made me want to read so much more. And um, as everything sort of works out, um, it's so good, you guys. And there, I, I tweeted at the end of this, one, I hope that there are more novellas that um, the main characters, the two main agents get involved in. Hamid and Asi, I want to say? Onsi and Hamid. Um, they were great. They were just, they're uh, one of those tandems you'll definitely love them. But then there's also this character in here who's sort of in the background, this Agent Fatma, who um, is supposedly like the star, and she comes in at one point, and I was like, I need to know her story, like now. It was, she was fascinating. So there was so much really good. This is a short read, it's a fast read, it's a fun read. You will definitely be involved. My only problem and it's so minute, is the back says that you're in Cairo in 1912. I don't know that that meant anything. There's not a lot about 1912 Cairo that sort of stands out in my memory of reading this book, um, but I don't know that that was important, but I kept waiting for a little bit more, like what was the, and I, the only thing I could kind of think is maybe the suffragist movement and how it went on, and I don't know anything about 1912 Cairo um, to say if that political movement was going on at the same time in our current history. But um, I was just wondering if that had sort of a different spin. If I missed it, maybe that could be very well true because, uh, you know, I don't know everything. Um, but that being said, it didn't matter. This book is fantastic. It is fun and you will love it. And I love all of Tornovelas. So please pick up The Haunting of uh, Tram Car 15 by P. De Gilles. Clark, and I really need to try to figure out how to say his name. I always try, and I always butcher it, and I'm so sorry, sir. Um, and again, it comes out on February 12th, 2019. It's right around the corner. The next book that I read is also a little slim little novella, and that is Miss Ice Sandwich by Nico Kawakami. This is from Pushkin Press, and it is translated from the Japanese by Louise Hill Kawai. Now, 
What I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make this mistake right now. For some reason, I always wanted to say Miss Ice Cream Sandwich. And I think it's because ice cream sandwiches are much more a thing, maybe here than elsewhere. And I just wanted one the whole entire time. But that being said, Miss Ice Sandwich is the story of a young boy who is absolutely fascinated by a woman who stands behind a sandwich counter in a store selling them. And we learn that he's got some social anxiety issues. He doesn't have a lot of friends. And he sees this woman behind the counter and she has something different about her eyes. And he falls in love with the image and the beauty that he sees in her face and her eyes. And this is, it's a soft book. It is really just a soft spoken tale about a young boy coming to terms with just the world around him. He creates a friendship with another young girl. There's a fast, fascinating scene where they are watching Heat, which is an American movie, which to me, I just dismissed in my head. I watched it ages ago, but what the author does with that is freaking brilliant. This is about the dynamic between him and his mother and his grandmother. There is the grandmother-grandson relationship in this is just absolutely charming. Um, it is not a, a long read, but it is definitely one, again, that packs a bit of a punch. I was a little teary-eyed at the end of this book, and it's all about people and knowing people. Um, again, quiet, not a lot of plot, but definitely great language, beautifully translated, and I'm so glad. I want to say I got this book because of Matthew Sharapa, and I'm so glad I did because it was really worth every minute. So that is Miss Ice Sandwich by um, Miko Kawakami, out from Pushkin Press, translated from the Japanese by Louise Hill Kawai. And yeah, no, definitely a fan of this author, and we'll be looking for more of her stuff moving forward. So I got a lot of really good press. You guys seem to like these read and reviewed videos. So this is how I'm going to continue doing my 2019 reading. I should have one about every week. I read about three books a week on average. Um, so I think we should be there. Um, so you should see that as we go along. As always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. You guys don't know how much that I do. And if you're new to my channel, I hope all three of these books wind up on your TBR and you absolutely love them. And until next time, I wish you happy reading and I hope everything is going well. Talk to you later. Bye!